is still plus politics. Now, the Igbo Leaders and Elders Consultative Forum, uh, better known as the Imeo B. Ohanez Indibu, have warned that any attempt by the All Progressive Congress, APC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to deny the Southeast region of their 2023 presidential tickets will spell doom for Nigeria's corporate existence. Now, in the same vein, the movement for the actualization of sovereign state of Biafra, Mossab, called on President Muhammadu Buhari to facilitate and ensure the emergence of a president of Igbo extraction in the 2023 general elections. The group emphasized that the emergence of such a president would help the country diffuse many bottled anger, which has fueled agitations. Well, joining us to discuss this are political analysts Francis Chilaka and Achike Chude. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, um, let me start by asking a question that, you know, bothers me when people say to the president, make sure that you have a ticket from the southeast. I have no problems with a southeastern president or, you know, an Igbo president. But why should that be Mr. President's problem? I'm going to start with you, Francis. Um, you know, you need to understand the dynamics of Nigerian politics and um, how, it, how it plays out and how um, we've come to believe that um, the incumbent, um, whoever the incumbent is as Mr. President, has uh, what it takes. He has a magic wand, you know, to decide who becomes the next president. And usually this is um, done by the parties adopting, in each of their parties adopting uh, a particular candidate that they know that the Mr. President will support. You know, but having said that, you know, having said that, I uh, I would say to the core Igbos, the Southeasterners, we're looking for a president of the Southeastern region. Um, we need to put our house in order. Um, it's, it's one thing for Mossab and any other group to say, well, we want the presidency. Well, you need to do the homework. You need to do the work. You need to reach out. You need to, um, you know, shake hands across the Niger to embrace everybody, you know. So the Southeast needs to decide what they really want. You know, do they want uh, a referendum? Do they want uh, uh, to succeed? Or do they want the presidency? You can't want everything at the same time. And you can't have different people speaking for the Southeast at the same time. If, if the Southeast leaders are serious and ready for this presidency, then they should put their hearts in order. They should be able to, by now, know the number of people from the Southeast that are going to participate in the election and ensure that they do everything possible to have one formidable candidate from each of the parties to put forward. I wonder from what you're saying, it, it, does it mean that the Igbos are not necessarily ready? Does it mean that the South is just, they're just voicing um, the, 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 the want or the um, need for an Igbo president, but then they've not done their homework? Because this is what I'm picking from what you're saying, that they need to put their house in order. If, you, if this is something that has been on the lips of every person in the South is, especially the fact that they're talking about, oh, we're being ma marginalized, we're being given the short end of the stick, should that not have made the South Easterners look within and be prepared long enough for a time like this? Because I'm, again, saying this is what I'm picking from what you just said. Maybe I'm wrong. How much control, how much control do the South is have in the two major political parties? That's where let's start from there. What is the control? What, what, you know, what percentage of control do they have? Okay, agreed, yes. Uh, PDP and APC, who, the two major parties, they have a, a, a zoning formula which they have been applying uh, uh, since um, the democratic dispensation came into play. But then, what we see playing out today is like a dysfunction of the entire system. You know, all of a sudden, everybody is saying, oh, we don't believe in zoning. We don't want to follow zoning anymore. You know, so something is, you know, definitely wrong in the structure of these two political parties. Mm. And this is where the Igbo leaders need to go to first and resolve issues. Why is it that they're now saying they don't want to do zoning? What is the problem? So you can't tell me that, you know, we can blame Mr. President for everything, but we can't be blaming Mr. President when the political parties themselves are not doing the right thing. So the Igbo leaders that are in these parties should come out and tell us what the problems are. Hmm. Why is it that suddenly PDP is not zoning his uh, presidency, presidency, uh, presidency ticket to the southeast? What is wrong? Why is APC not doing the same thing? So these are 
pertinent questions that need to be asked and resolved, which we expect that the Igbo leaders should be in the forefront. I, I would tell you that I'm very happy with one of them, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ike who has gone to court to challenge the PDP for not uh, uh, following the zoning formula. And for him and for every other person in the PDP that is from the Southeast, we feel that there is an injustice being played out there. So this is what we expect a lot of them to do. And not to just waste you know, time on, on, on social media, on the print media and the electronic media saying, Mr. President, we want this, we okay. want this. They need to, this is the kind of thing I want them to, to be doing. They okay. need to challenge the status quo to ensure that, yes, the two parties follow the zoning formula they have set before now. Achikachire, um where do you think the problem lies? Is it with the political parties or is it with the people? Is it with the following within the party? He's just made a case that someone has taken a certain political party to court. But here we are in the midst of an agitation for the South, a Southeast presidential ticket. A very senior polit politician from the Southeast, Wazriki, has thrown his weight behind a northerner who's also running for presidency. And for some, this is a dampener on you know, the agitation. But I want to ask you, as someone who's from the Southeast and as someone who has seen elections come and go, where do you think the problem lies in this Southeastern bead for presidency? Well, um, I, I, I don't know how many troops uh, Wazurike has. He used to have quite a number. He doesn't have them anymore, so Wazurike is not as uh, important, as prominent as it used to be in the days of Masob. But apart from that, his organization, Masob, has come out solidly to back um, the Southeast presidency. Uh, so, and then, but beyond that, again, is the fact that uh, Igbos are beginning to come out, the Southeasterners are beginning to come out to speak with one voice. And I think they have made a lot of strides in that direction. I mean, and it's not just beyond beyond the Southeasterners, you have organizations like Afeni Ferry, then you have uh, the leader of Pande, uh, Edwin Clark, also, you know, all clamoring for a Southeastern president. So the, the, the agitation has actually gone beyond the Southeast, the agitation for a Southeast president. And then even in the Southwest, of course, uh, Afeni Ferry is from the Southwest. In the Middle Belt, you also have that agitation also for a Southeastern president. So it is not as dire, I mean, it's not as bleak as it was because they are beginning to coalesce. Even all the presidential candidates of uh, both the, uh, you know, aspirants of both the PDP and the APC are speaking now with one voice that it has to be the Southeastern president. Now we know, uh, with, I mean, the nature of things, I agree with uh, Mr. Chilaka there that uh, we also need to do, the Southeasterners need to do as much as they can. They need to reach out. Uh, because you see, it is part of power is never given, power is taken, you know. But it depends on how power is taken. So there, there are just uh, you know two things I, I would say uh, with regards to that. First of all, is the fact that from 1999 to date, you know um, what we have been seeing in this country has been a justification of uh, the biblical injunction, you know that um, that. Uh, um, uh, yeah, well, well, about about you know uh, the same the same power that uh, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent taken by force. Unfortunately, that is what we have been seeing in Nigeria. The presidency going to the south south because of the agitation in the in the Niger Delta. The presidency going to the southwest because of the death of Abiola and the crisis that generated. You know, and then of course uh, the, the 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 threat by some members of uh, the APC about the presidency of this country if they not, not did not get it um, after Jonathan's first term. Uh, you know, and the fact that we are told by a chieftain of the APC that they actually brought in mercenaries for the purpose of causing trouble if the APC did not get the presidency. So you now have agitation in the Southeast too. And the reality, and just like the Southeastern Eastern leaders are saying, what is going on in the Southeast, the violence, you know, and the unfortunate destruction of, you know, to lives and properties in the Southeast cannot be contained by the military. And we have seen that, yeah. you know. So we have seen the military make all kinds of incursions into the Southeast. And we have seen how these elements, dangerous elements, I would call them, because, you know, I don't think any reasonable person will be happy with the bloodshed that is happening in the Southeast, whether, whether it is coming from, you know, state actors, the soldiers, or whether it is coming from non-state actors, whether it is the CNES, ESN, or rogue or renegade organizations operating in the Southeast. 
but there is a clear warning that perhaps one way of of bringing down the tension in the southeast and bringing peace in the southeast is the issue of the presidency because any other pre you know president we have to continue with acts of violence against the people of the Southeast, and it will backfire. But, you know, once you have a Southeasterner as president of this country, it becomes very difficult for the average Southeasterner to continue the violence because that will be resisted by the people of the Southeast because they have a candidate, I mean, a president in, in, in Asorok. And, and so that makes it difficult for them to continue with the agitation. So it's about balancing what is going on. It's unfortunate that we've gotten to a level where any group of people want the presidency or they feel that the presidency should go to them. You know, they resort to acts of violence to intimidate the polity. But that is where we have found ourselves. And then the issue of zoning, it is very clear that if zoning is not implemented, it is going to be a disservice to the people of, of the Southeast and an injustice, a gross injustice against them. But it is not just about zoning to the south in general this is what the apc has done but within the south itself it is only an act of natural justice for them to say look it has to go to the southeast you know and that's what i, I Feri Feri has adequately said you know and then um, well so it's not I, I, i'm sorry Chike. I, I just want i just want to come in there i'm so sorry to talk over you um, you, yeah. you talked yeah. about Afeni Fere, the Middle Belt Forum, of course, PANDEF. They have come out with statements. But there are two things I'm going to ask. Um, how can we tell that this is not political lip service? Because we see a lot of these people saying a lot of things, but then we're not necessarily seeing the action to, to follow what they're saying. Again, can we be assured that there will be concerted efforts within the South, because as you can see, there are more and more Southwesterners who are declaring for presidency, much more than, I mean, you hardly even see a South, a South, South, you know, person, but we're seeing more people from the Southwest. How ready is the South to push that power or that ticket to the Southeast, even in the first instance? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah you see, I don't know about pushing it to the Southeast because obviously those in the South, in the Southwest, under the platform of the APC, do not have any obligation to the PDP. So I think it's only a natural thing for them to want to, you know, insist that the president, you know, uh, if, 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 if a president can emerge from the Southwest, should emerge from the Southwest. But I think what is now happening is that uh, there are even insinuations that even PC that has zoned the presidency to the Southwest is beginning to think twice about it. Uh, you, you know, perhaps they feel that uh, there is a weakness in the South and that the South has not been able to come up with the required consensus needed to put pressure on the North to give up on the issue of the presidency. But they will be making a terrible mistake if they think that after eight years under the president, that they can, the North can remain in power for another eight years. That would be chaos. And that's why people are warning. So what is expected really is for the political elites. Well, look, if it's a matter of justice and equity and fairness, then the presidency should go to the Southeast. If it is that alone, it mm -hmm. should go to the Southeast. And that's why a lot of other people are beginning to say that, that it will amount to injustice if the Southeast mind that. But there's also the issue of the existential you know, threat that further violence in the Southeast poses to the rest of the country. The, the, the violence in the North is even enough for anybody to think twice about allowing a northern, northern candidate right now to retain power. Because they have been in power for about eight years. The insecurity has become worse, far worse. In fact, there are some people, even the North, Northerners, some Northerners that are beginning to say that they do not think that a Northerner might be able to stem the tide of violence in the North. That it, perhaps it might need somebody from the South to be able to do that. You know, and then, of course, the contention of uh, violence in the Southeast. So it makes a lot more sense. So any attempt by the entire North itself to say, look, power is not going to shift to the South. We bring the South together, you know, in a way that the North is not going to enjoy. So I, like I said, I think that the very best thing ultimately at the end of the day is to allow justice and equity to prevail and to put bed the, the, the crisis of, of, of injustice or the issue of injustice and, fair, and unfairness that has been a lot of the Southeast, at least on the basis of the perception of the perception about how they are being treated. Okay, quickly, we have just a minute, so I'm going to give each person 30 seconds. I'm coming to you, Francis. With all of this, the many people who have declared, we've seen one 
Southeasterner for, I think, the People's Democratic Party. Uh, maybe two in the PDP, I'm not very certain. Um, but what, is, what do you think the, the power, the backing, the following of those people, what change can it really make going forward? But all the chaos that is going on between the political parties, especially for the PDP who's saying, we're throwing the ring open, come one, come all. How do we see this campaign season playing out? Um, I, think, I think PDP would be shooting itself in the, in the foot when, uh, for taking this decision that it wants to take. Um, I would say for equity, justice, and fairness, uh, PDP should do the right thing because actually PDP is the party for the South Easterners. It has always been the party for South Easterners. And there's this agreement and arrangement that it is time for PDP to zone the presidency to the South East. So I, I, I think that they'll be doing something that is so disgraceful. And if they don't take time, that will lead to the okay. ultimate uh, death of PDP in okay. Nigerian political space. Okay, and finally, um, Achike, because we are out of time, you talked about justice, equity, and fair play. Has that really ever come to play in Nigerian politics? Why would it come to play in 2023? For what reason? Well, there has been, no, no, there has been balancing. There has been balancing, and it is that balancing that people are talking about. I mean, there was balancing with the death of Adiola. There was balancing when we had crisis in the Niger Delta. There was balancing when it came to, you know, Motuhari and so on. And so when it comes to the Southeast, there has to be that balance. If that balance is not assured by the political elites, and it's about collective bargaining, that is what they do. All of these things that produce all these, uh, you know, dynamics that produced, uh, especially uh, uh, Basun Joe and Jonathan and so on, was a matter of collective bargaining by the political elites. Okay. So if the political elites, are, and I think they should be smart enough to understand the signs and to read the signs of the times, that it does not all go well for the rest of the country, for okay. the north. To, it will be foolhardy for them to, if, to attempt to remain, to retain power in, All right. in 2023. Well, I want to say thank you, Achike Chude, um, Francis Chilaka, both are political analysts. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll leave you with what Nigerians think about the calls for a Southeast president. And that has been the show tonight on Plus Politics. We're coming over again tomorrow, 7 p.m. West African time. I'm Mary Anacone. Have a good evening. They sit, present they sit, because they have not had the oneness, the oneness, the unity. So they have, they don't have the material for now to work with. The moment they have the oneness, the unity, the one accord, they will rule Nigerian. They deserve it now because the system have not been fair to them. I personally am not from the Igbo states, but I personally think that they are hardworking people. You understand? Because Nigeria is a now, they have not been fair to them, the leadership and everything, they have been kicked aside. And I think it's high time they get their own share of what is happening in the country. Yes, I think so. Because Imo is, uh, Igbo people are more experienced than all these outsiders and Yorubas. So I think Igbo person, if he, if he rule Nigeria, he will rule it better. Well, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, uh, if it is by a rotation, it is being done by a rotation, if there is an agreement within both the northerners, the westerners, and the southerners, that things should be done rotationally, I mean, choosing the president of Nigeria. If the Yorubas have ruled and the northerners have ruled, if it's come to the westerners to rule, they should rule. If it, if it is the turn for the northerners to rule, they should rule. If it is the turn to the easterners, to, the, to be ruled, they should rule. If they should give uh, an Hebo the opportunity this time, I think maybe it will be a change and uh, let's see how it goes.